We are standing on Canton Island, which is the largest atoll in the Phoenix Islands protected area. The only place where there is a resident population of e Kiribati people who are caretakers of this really special protected area, which is the largest and deepest World Heritage Site on the planet. We have repaired a tide gauge, enjoyed the beautiful lagoon and the warmth of the Kiribati people, and we've only been here a few hours. We were snorkeling coral castles, which is one of the most spectacular sites on the planet, and um, it's a place that I was worried would have been bleached from the 2015-16 bleaching event, but um, it is a relief frankly, to be able to report that I saw no signs of bleaching. And the reef, which had completely been destroyed in 2002 and 2003 and had so quickly rebounded, continues to rebound. And we snorkeled on those things today and they were teeming with life. They have come back with great force and great resilience. It was fantastic to see all the fish that were there, the blue ones, the pink ones, the green ones. For deep sea biologists to see shallow water, communities of corals like that, it was fantastic. I've never seen anything like it. Corals that were wide open, spread open like tabletops to the sun. They, they maximize the surface area for the sun. And when I go down deep in a couple of days and look at the corals on the, on the side of the seamount here, they're all gonna be pointed the other, the other way. They're all gonna be facing into the wind or into the current, trying to feed uh, on particles that are run, rushing by. When I was a student early on, somebody told me there were deep sea corals and I told them they were wrong. You think of coral reefs and they're in the light and they're using photosynthesis with their symbionts and they are shallow and they create these beautiful landscapes and you just don't, like most people I think don't realize that there are coral reefs that are that beautiful and that colorful in the deep sea with all the same kinds of animals living alongside of them and there's been a, a good deal of research in the last couple of decades but we're still asking really fundamental questions. They're not only an animal themselves but they're a home to an ecosystem of other animals. They're like neighborhoods when you get down to the deep sea. And they're living under incredible pressure. They're living in incredibly cold waters with low oxygen. I mean, they are surviving in some of the most inhospitable parts of our planet, and yet they thrive and they are beautiful. This is a region of the oceans that we know very little about. It's very hard to get to. And these are some of the most pristine habitats that are left on the planet. And now that the Phoenix Islands protected area is entirely no-take fishing, they've excluded most human impacts from the area and gives us the opportunity to look at these deep water systems without much human influence. For me, it is the corals. Like, that's what I will be jumping up and down in the control van about. We will see a coral, hopefully, that is over two meters in length. And that coral will be thousands of years old. Like, we are seeing animals that are older than most things, like, we can actually relate with. Um, and that's just phenomenal. We're looking at all of these interactions from one species to another, the things that are living on the corals, how the corals are interacting with the ocean, and how the corals and the ocean are interacting on this mountain up to the coral reefs on top. And they, they are all connected to one another, some in very clear, direct ways, and some in ways that we're really just beginning to piece together because it's so complex. All of these interactions, all these little connections we can draw will help us to put together the whole puzzle. Thank you.